Cheers. Hi everyone from Paris. Um, I thought that I was gonna be filming this at home, but instead I'm filming it here in my cute little Airbnb that is so much bigger than my home. <laughs> We're gonna go over what I read in May. I did not expect, why is it so dark? I didn't expect to read a whole lot because as you guys might know, I've been traveling this entire month from May 5th until still currently now. Surprised myself by reading a ton of books before we left. Literally in five days, I think I read five books. Yeah, I'm gonna dive into the list, but first of all, gonna give a shout out to this video sponsor. I will get into it later in a video on my main channel, but like, thank you so much. Sponsors, you have no idea how important <laughs> you are at this very moment. Squarespace. I have used Squarespace for my website for four years, I think. Squarespace just gives you a really beautiful and easy to use platform to create your website. Whether you have a shop or a blog or you just wanna start a community, there's actually a lot of features for like members only content, revenue stuff. You can connect all your social accounts so people can stay updated on like your Instagram and stuff right there and it is so simple there are so many really wonderful layouts that you can choose like if you know nothing about technology um squarespace can make you have like the most beautiful professional looking website with just a couple of button presses so um you can go to squarespace.com and start your free trial and like literally just play around and set up your own website see how you feel about it you know um and then when you're ready to launch you can go to squarespace.com slash Carrie can read and you can get 10% off of your first domain and or website. So um, all the info will be in the description box, but thank you again to Squarespace. Okay, let's dive into the books. I actually, I literally 45 minutes ago finished a book <laughs> that's on this list. Today is May 31st. Um, so I'm very excited to talk about all of these. Shall we begin? What did I even read at the beginning of May? Oh my God, okay, great, we're starting off strong. Um, last month, I talked about reading Dance of Thieves and I feel like I did it a disservice because I didn't hype it up enough <laughs> because Dance of Thieves was good. Vow of Thieves, the sequel to like the second book in the duology, so good. I don't remember anything about it because I read this almost a month ago. Um, but I just remember thinking that this book was so action packed. There was a lot of like political intrigue, very complicated, like family stuff, loyalty stuff going on. Um, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characters. Yeah, I just 100% really enjoyed it. And so if I didn't sell you enough when I talked about how I did enjoy Dance of Thieves, um please know that the duology only gets better and so the second book is fantastic also everybody told me when i was like confused about um the world building in dance of thieves yes there is actually a whole nother series that precedes this kind of like shadow and bone and then reading six of crows i read six of crows without reading shadow and bone so like that's just my thing i guess is jumping into worlds kind of halfway but i I do feel like you don't actually have to read the previous series to understand it. It's just a little bit more bumpy, like getting into it, but I enjoyed it just fine. Um, will I read the other series? Yes, because I liked um, their writing. But yeah, Dance of Thieves, Thieves, Vow of Thieves, a great duology, great way to start my month. Okay, next up was a confusing one. Next up, I read The Book of Night by Holly Black and we've talked about the cruel prince Carden and i have a real enemies to lovers storyline going on i did not like him whatsoever he's growing on me every day every single day Carden grows on me more um but i regardless of Carden, i love holly black and i love her writing and so book of night is actually an adult fantasy i knew nothing about it going in i thought that it was going to be much more fairy tale-esque but it's a lot more just like gritty it's very dark kind of dirty um definitely very adult definitely not what i expected at all it's definitely very heavy on vibes um and then about what did i write 
I said the action only picks up about 50% of the way through. Editing Carrie here, I didn't actually say anything about what it was about. Um, the magic system involved has to do with shadows. You can like, tamper with your shadow. You can make your shadow have a different shape. It's all about that. I can't go into it a lot more, but yeah, it's all about shadows, a little bit of immortality going on maybe if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, sorry to give you like nothing about this book. <laughs> I enjoyed it, but it wasn't necessarily my usual cup of tea and it was a little bit slow but it's very like dark gritty she works at a bar i think so it's a lot of like that kind of feeling of like the nightlife and stuff like that um but like in a small town i think it takes place somewhere in massachusetts or like somewhere in new england interesting vibes i also like just had this weird theme going on of like endlessly reading books that have pickpockets in them and i <laughs> I don't know why um but yeah it was definitely not what I expected but um enjoyed yeah book of night by oh and there was a twist that I kind of saw coming but that's okay anyway yeah oh I did read another book damn it hold on gotta edit my list I knew I forgot one the twist part made me remember the book that I read recently okay next up is another book so book of the night I actually got from book of the month last month um and then I also read darling girl which was from book of the month last month if you're interested darling girl whoa not what I expected at all darling girl sells itself as a kind of retelling or a book inspired by Peter Pan and when I tell you I mean I always have like eh, feelings about Peter Pan but I don't think about it too deeply um this book Peter Pan and I are done <laughs> um this book ruined Peter Pan for me absolutely it is a super dark thriller um it is about the so there's Wendy and then her daughter Jane and then Jane had Holly and then Holly had oh no literally the most important person in the book anyway you you know what i'm talking about it seems like in this story peter pan continues to visit all of the female descendants of wendy darling things about this book it is set in modern day holly is the ceo of the darling beauty company um which kind of threw me off a little bit the thing about the characters is that i didn't like a single one of them not a one not a one. Holly has had a really really rough time of things as we learn but the way that she treats everyone around her um is just she's very unlikable. Jane is very unlikable. There's not a lot of love for these characters in my heart um but it becomes very interesting once she actually heads back to england and there are twists it's definitely like very dark um i do i did like see the twist coming i don't think it ruined anything for me but yeah i would say if you're interested in a thriller that has like a strange fairy tale feeling to it um also like if you know peter pan well it's helpful um to understand the characters in it um and if you're okay with peter pan being ruined for you um you can go ahead <laughs> and read it I, I mean i yeah i enjoyed it but i did not enjoy that it kind of demolished peter pan for me but there we go it's you know a daughter goes missing you know that was darling girl <laughs> next up i finished the oh my god what's it called the renegades series i read arch enemies and supernova so as i said i guess last month when i was talking about uh the renegades it is a story about superheroes <laughs> um it's like an enemies to lovers kind of thing um and yeah it's not a fantasy it's about superheroes which felt pretty weird when i started it but as you continue with the story it gets less hokey i thought that the story got a lot better with arch enemies um like i said with the renegades there was a little bit of cringe regarding like the romance and just like the general kind of goofiness of some of the superheroes and the supervillains but i thought that arch enemies was the best out of the trilogy um we basically have our girl nova whose parents were killed and she was raised by her uncle who is like the supervillain who led kind of the overthrow of the government 
um, and the government at the time basically hated anyone with powers. He was an anarchist and so he overthrew the government and then tried to, I don't know, create kind of equality, whatever, just like have no rules. And um, my understanding of anarchy is very elementary, I'm very sorry. Um, but that ended up not working out perfectly. And so another group of superheroes called the Renegades overthrew him. And so now the government is basically like, the superheroes take care of everything and then the normal people just like go about their lives i guess and so the villains are still very much like trying to overthrow the renegades but they're small in numbers and small in power and stuff like that so nova actually joins the renegades infiltrates whatever and like tries to find a way to take them down from the inside um of course she joins a team of like very nice people she ends up making friends she ends up falling in love blah, 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 blah. so i really really liked arch enemies my only issue with supernova was that i felt like they were kind of dragging the plot and so they would make nova and other characters just like switch their points of view so quickly. I, I just didn't, it wasn't believable when they would kind of change their beliefs or change what side they were on. Um, so that's the only thing that I was kind of like, Meh. Um, but overall, if you're looking for something different that still kind of feels like a fantasy because there are superpowers involved, um, the Renegades. It definitely felt much more YA absolutely much more YA, but she didn't do me wrong. <laughs> I thought that the next book was a fever dream. I completely forgot that I read this. Um, I have this thing where before a big trip, it's getting so dark, I'm so sorry, the sun just went behind a cloud. Right before a big trip, I tend to like not do anything. I'll like pack really early. And then just like the week before, I don't want to meet people. I don't want to, like, I'm just like, I'm going on a trip. I have to be at home and sit with my suitcase and I don't know. I don't know i'm weird so i just read books basically and this was the book that i had physically in my house and so i read dating dr dill <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> this book was quite funny it's about um a girl who really wants to keep her house because her mother passed away and her mom was like really instrumental in building the house and decorating the house and so it really feels like this house is like the last piece of her mom um but her sister is getting married her dad is retiring her grandma wants to go back to india so her dad is gonna sell the house and she's like i don't have enough money to buy this house what am I gonna do? And her dad is like, well, if you get engaged, I can give you your wedding present. Like he has a, he has like this ton of money that he's gonna give her sister and her, um, but strictly only when they get married. And she's like, can't you just give it to me now? And like, I'll promise I'll get married soon. And she's like, no, 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 you gotta get married. So of course it's like this fake engagement trope kind of thing she randomly finds this guy at a bar which is so unbelievable because we get two points of view and the guy is very clearly like i he he had um a fiance that passed away and since then he hasn't spoken to women apparently and so he's like i haven't spoken to a woman in three years and then he sees this girl at the bar walks up to her and is like so suave like so suave so it's like did you why did you give us that whole like i haven't spoken to women in three years thing only to like not be awkward at all i don't know it was mm. the beginning of this book was a little strange best parts were the aunties who were like trying to set up the marriage and stuff like that the dirty talk the sex scenes were horrific for me to read like absolutely the most horrible thing i have ever if you're gonna name your dick don't <laughs> like literally it was painful for me to read um the ending you know it was fine it was fine i loved that it was set mostly in new jersey um <laughs> and that's about all i can say like i read it it was kind of rough like i said i thought that it was a fever dream i literally thought that dating dr Dill was a fever dream so that one was like a maybe steer clear of it i don't know it depends on how you feel about smut but i was like in physical pain but a little romance that I did read um, that I did enjoy is Soulmates. Full disclaimer, 
Susan is my friend. The author is a personal friend. Um, she sent this to me early. I am so grateful um, with like the cutest little gift bag as well. Soulmates comes out in September. It is a young adult romance. Um, and this actually took me by surprise. I hope, Susan, don't close your ears. I'm not gonna say that I hate it. It totally took me by surprise because Susan loves K-dramas. And so, and I knew vaguely from the plot that it was gonna be kind of K-drama-esque. And so I was ready for like ridiculousness. You know what a K, you know, a K-drama, right? Um, and it was not at all. It was actually so refreshingly realistic. I literally got the feeling, so it's set in San Diego. I'll tell you what it's about in a second. But it's set in San Diego over summer break. And it literally felt like as I was reading it, I was on my couch and I just felt like I was in San Diego on summer break. Like there's a kind of slowness about it, but it's like, it just felt like a, a quiet summer vacation. Feel I don't know how else to describe it. It was very calming. I enjoyed it. So it is actually about two childhood best friends. Their mothers are best friends. And so they were just kind of roped together um, from birth. And the boy has since left um, in high school, he moved back to Korea because his dad passed away and I guess in order to support the family It was easier for them to be in Korea And so he went to Korea and he actually became a k-drama actor very successful um, young up-and-coming actor um, And his friend the girl in this um, has just kind of stayed and is a you know normal high school girl in san diego right not gonna spoil anything but like a lot of stuff happens in korea and he's like i just gotta go i gotta leave i'm going back to san diego his mom his sister and him end up going back to san diego and they're staying in um their friend's house for summer something happened and we learn it slowly but like something happened that they really don't get along anymore the girl especially feels really betrayed and like doesn't ever want to hang out with this guy. It's just kind of them breaking through that misunderstanding and, and getting to know each other again and falling in love and it's really cute. He ends up making like a bucket list of things to do in San Diego while he's here. <laughs> um, and so that was just a really cute way of like seeing San Diego. I absolutely love those scenes. But yeah, so it's like this very just heartwarming childhood friends to lovers story, but it also talks a lot about from Susan's experience of growing up Korean and like not necessarily feeling very proud of her heritage or connected to it and then suddenly having like the explosion of k-pop happen and like k-dramas and suddenly everyone around her like loves the fact that she's korean and like wants her to be more korean and so that's what the girl is really struggling with in high school in america is like all of a sudden everybody's like oh my god do you know bts <laughs> and she's just like i don't listen to k-pop you know um so yeah i think that there's a lot of different ways that people can connect with it and like i said it literally just felt like summer vacation it was like a palate cleanser i just felt relaxed and happy after reading it um it was just a wholesome little book um and i'm very happy that susan wrote it so yeah that is soulmates um coming out September. <laughs> Next up, I'm just keeping it up with the romances. Um, because the last time I took a long flight, I read Red, White, and Royal Blue, and it made the time pass. Like, it was amazing. And it was also a good book. Red, White, and Royal Blue. Please read it. Um, but yeah, I found that romances, like, they just feel like I'm watching a romantic comedy, so it really helps pass the time. And so I wanted to read another one on the flight, and everybody recommended Charm Offensive which I read. If this doesn't get made into like a Netflix rom-com, I don't know what would be. Um, it, it very much, it was a little like cringy and silly, but it definitely had just like the makings of kind of like a cheap-ish rom-com. <laughs> and I mean that in the best of ways. This is about a boy named Dev. And I remember his name because as I was reading this book, Kurt was next to me watching Slumdog Millionaire. And so God help me, I could not picture anyone else but Dev Patel as this Dev. And I feel like the author meant that. Anyway, Dev has always grown up watching, uh, it's called like Ever After or something. It's basically like The Bachelor, but it's like fairy tale themed. So there's like 
Prince Charming and then there's all of these women who have to do all these really weird um, competitions and stuff to win his love but it's very much like fairy tale I don't know I don't know but he grew up watching it and loving it and he ended up growing up to be one of the kind of producers um, of the show and usually his job is he is the handler of the princesses um, so all of the female contestants he's there to like manage them give them a pep talk you know coach them through the process um but something weird happens and he ends up having to be um the handler for the prince and what we learn slowly through the um about the prince is that we end up learning more about it but we can tell from the very beginning that he has um at least social anxiety um but he's very difficult to work with um he's not like the typical guy who goes on the bachelor you know um and so we learn his story why he even came on here um and a little romance develops i thought it was cute i don't know how well that was portrayed i'm always nervous about talking about things that I'm, I've never had personal experience with, so I don't know how well it was portrayed, um, but, but I just thought that the romance was cute. And like I said, it just felt like a kind of cheapish rom-com that I would see on, you know, Netflix or something like that. It was what I needed for a long flight. I read it in one sitting and it uh, went by like that. And yeah, and, and there's like, they travel all over the world. So I found that interesting at least we went to like new orleans and then we went to south africa or something i don't know um it was a good it was a good time i thought the ending was the ending was when i was like oh yeah this is like a made for tv film in the best way so if you're just looking for like a beach read or something charm offense <laughs> i feel like i didn't sell that one too well it was definitely a book that if you have a couple hours that you need to kill and you need to be distracted it will do it for you but um <laughs> next up so then i took a long break probably about two weeks where i didn't read and then we entered our travel time of having very long train rides and i found myself wanting to read look at that and so i pulled up um i actually got this from the library it finally came in it was on hold for so long um i read a far wilder magic and this is by the same author who wrote down Comes the Night, which I enjoyed, not to judge a book by the cover, but I really liked the cover of this book, so I was ready. And everybody else, I had so many people tell me that I would like it. So, I read it, and I liked it. I read this in a style that was very different from how I usually read. You know how I, I tend to read things in one go if I can, um, or at least like within two days. But because of how we were traveling, I ended up reading this in like tiny little spurts over probably like a week so i really felt like i was in the story for a long time which might have added to the magical feel of it i don't know um but it was one that like i thought about for a long time just because i was reading it for so long if that makes any sense Anyway, A Far Wilder Magic, <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that, is about a girl who lives on her own in a little cottage that's like falling apart. It's, it's like a manor actually, it's like a big house. Um, that's like falling apart in the middle of the woods. It's like five miles away from the closest tiny town. Um, and the reason she lives alone is because her mother is a, oh no, I always forget this word. I know you guys are screaming at the screen what it is, help me out. I want to say apothecary, but it's not right. Alchemy, alchemy. I, that word like literally never comes to my mind. I summon it and it just never, I always want to say apothecary. Okay, so her mom is an alchemist, right? So this world has like a sprinkle of fantasy in it. Her mother is an alchemist and she just like goes off for work trips, um, for research every once in a while. And she has been gone for the longest time ever like she was she usually comes back after like a month two months her mom has been gone for like much longer um and our girl margaret uh <laughs> remember her name margaret um is just kind of living in this house and trying to make ends meet it's unclear if she needs to go to school i don't think any of these people go to school i don't know and then we meet our other character wes our next character is wes and he lives in the city but um 
he in order to become an alchemist you need to kind of be an apprentice and like learn under someone um and he has had no success he has been an apprentice for pretty much every alchemist and they have you know turned him away he has some kind of just natural gift for it but he has a really hard time with studying like it's never really touched upon whether he does have some kind of learning um whatever but he does say that he has a lot of trouble reading and stuff like that um so he just kind of gets turned away because his tutors are just like not patient with him so he basically is like last ditch effort margaret's mom is the last alchemist i haven't talked to she hasn't answered my letters so i'm just gonna show up and i'm gonna like knock on her door and i'm gonna you know make her take me as an apprentice because he's very charming and so you know if he talks to someone usually they don't turn him away so he shows up and of course it's just margaret margaret is like get out of here no and he's like well i literally don't have anywhere else to go he needs to support his family like he's the only man in the house it's very unclear when this takes place there are cars but there's also maybe not a lot of electricity. I think it's supposed to take place, like based on the fashion that she describes, I think it's supposed to take place, like it could be in the 20s, it could be in the 1800s. I don't know, uh, to be honest. He's, he's basically like the only man in the house. I have to become an alchemist so that I can, you know, support my family. And so she's like, fine, you can stay here, but like, good luck, Chuck, right? <laughs> but the rest of the story is about the hunt which is there is some kind of like mystical fox um and wherever it appears every year they have this like grand hunt and people try and kill it because it's the last magical being um and this is where i thought it was actually quite interesting and i wish that we got i'll talk about it in a second but like i don't feel like anything was wrapped up basically the margaret her father was of a certain race and religion um it the way it's described it feels a lot like judaism so i believe that she is meant to be like jewish and then when wes describes his religion it sounds very kind of catholic but the religion that you're supposed to be in society just feels very like i don't know christian or something like that so they kind of bond over being religious and ethnic outcasts there's a lot of talk about immigration and stuff like that um and so they both have their shared feelings about killing this fox but if they win the hunt and kill this fox they would get money they would get recognition they would get the things that they need um margaret thinks that it would get her mom to come home all this stuff wes would be like i could provide for my family i would have the recognition to get an apprenticeship blah 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 so that is what's going on in the book i enjoyed it like i said it felt very whimsical very magical it i i just enjoyed the setting in general the way that things are described i thought that the romance was super sweet um but i felt like the ending like she pulled on so many interesting things like we talk about this magical fox so much and then like we never learn about it it felt very i wonder if this is going to be a duology i don't see how it could be but i felt like there was so much of the story that she put so much work into and then we never finished it we never learned about it and there were so many things that i wanted to know um so it was a very interesting read i enjoyed it but i felt like it didn't tie itself into like a perfect little bow at the end you know but like i said very whimsical very fairy tale esque confusing about the the timing and the setting but overall um yeah i did think it was cute so if you're looking for a cute little standalone fantasy enemies to lovers kind of thing going on a far wilder magic okay we're back in business the leaf blower stopped so next up i read girl in the tower which is a sequel to the bear and the nightingale and i'm so confused everybody told me that like my main com complaint not complaint but the thing that was interesting about the bear and the nightingale is that it felt so much like a fairy tale and it was very i thought very slow and everybody was like don't worry the girl in the tower and winter of the witch are so much faster paced there's so much more action where <laughs> this felt pretty much exactly the same as bear and the nightingale except i felt like there was less 
magic to it. So if you don't remember, is he gonna start again for real? We're powering through, I'm sorry guys. The Bear and the Nightingale is a tale based off of Russian fairy tales um, about a girl who lives in this very small Russian town um, and she has always been raised to believe in all of these kind of like, what are they? They're like these spirits or guardians. So you have like a house guardian and a stables guardian and then there's all of the forest spirits and blah, blah, blah. Um, and they're neither good nor bad, but they deserve your attention and respect and stuff like that. Um, but as Christianity starts to spread through Russia, people stop respecting and paying attention to those spirits. And so um, kind of the fabric of life starts to kind of die out and she is consider considered a witch because you know she still kind of talks to these spirits and she can see them and stuff like that and her mom was also kind of like a witchy person there's a lot more going on but basically like that's kind of the feeling that you get um there is the winter king of frost or like some big number one spirit winter guy who's like the king of death kind of thing i don't know there's also in the background like these bandits or something are coming through and destroying villages and it's hard to explain basically girl in the tower picks up where bear and the nightingale left off it follows actually i felt like a lot more of her brother's story her brother was a lot more present she has one brother that left to become a priest um, or a, like basically a monk, I guess. And he ends up becoming the advisor to the king. He's not the czar, but you know, whatever. There is this whole thing with those bandits that were killing people and burning villages. We followed that storyline really closely. We do get a little bit more romance, but it was so sporadic. Like we would focus for so long on like the brother and the bandit story. And so then when we would go back to like the romancy part, I was like, mm. So I am gonna finish it. I did get the final one on hold, I think yesterday. So I am gonna finish the series, but it's definitely a very slow, um, very old fairy tale. Like if you took an old fairy tale that you've read and just like stretched it into a 400 page book, <laughs> that's what it feels like. So it's not bad, um, but it's much, slower this one i will give it was a little bit more fast paced i thought that the plot was more interesting but it was still definitely less action-packed than what i'm used to so yeah that is the girl in the tower i was really scared that the girl in the tower was like just gonna follow her sister and her sister seems really boring so i was like oh um but it doesn't so we're good so yeah i will finish the series and i will let you know how i feel about winter of the witch but um where's the romance y'all i was promised a slow burn and this is like the slowest burn <laughs> next up is a book that i read on a very long train ride back to paris um so this is fresh and i read the betrayals this is by the same author who wrote the binding which was one of my favorite books of last year i thought that it was so beautifully written and written in such a really interesting way in terms of like the world building and her not really telling us a whole lot about the world like we really found out about it very slowly it's a book that's like wonderful to read for the first time and i haven't read it again for the second time but i think it will be like a totally different experience so when i saw that she had written another book i was very excited and so i started reading it it has kind of the same vibes as the binding as far as her not telling us what the hell is going on. Um, we learn about the world so slowly and we actually never learn about the main thing in the book, which I find, I was okay with it, but it was a little strange. So this book takes place in a world where we learn about it, but there's like weird political stuff going on. It feels very dystopian, um, feels a little like McCarthyan era um there's definitely like a dictatorship bubbling up you know um but we don't go too deeply into it but what we do go deeply into is this school and the nation that is having this whole like possible dictator problem right they have this national game um and this game is called the grand jeu it is literally never explained how do you play it what is it it's it's described in so many different ways um, it contains philosophy, math, 
logic, music. Um, there's also apparently weird hand gestures, which is how you even do, it's like, it's like a dance plus spoken word plus math somehow. Plus it's like a, it's like the player is a composer because there's a ton of music. I don't know. And so when she talks about creating these games because a lot of it takes place in this school where people are studying the game. When she talks about creating it, it's really beautiful and interesting. It reminded me a lot of like Erin Morgenstern kind of feeling where the vibes are so beautiful and cool, but you're like, I don't actually know what's going on. It was one of those. Um, so overall, like the vibes were really cool. What ends up happening is we have two main characters. One is Leo. Leo, um, has been kind of banished to go back to this school that he used to go to and he's supposed to like kind of study there. He got in like trouble with the government and so this is his punishment is like to, I don't know. Anyway, he has to stay there. Um, so we have him in present day, but we also see him through his diary. And I thought that I loved the diary section the most, absolutely. Um, but then we also have a, another character who is the first female magister. So the school, again, never fully explained, but the school has like a bunch of different magisters that are in charge of different things. And so she's basically like a, a teacher. I definitely didn't like it as much as the binding because I felt like the mystery of the world was never explained and i felt like i saw the twist coming so far ahead of time so it didn't hit me and it also just kind of like annoyed me a little bit i don't know there there's also like another character that i thought i did not understand what her purpose was until literally the last page you understand her purpose um i i liked it i really think if you like aaron morgenstern and you're okay with that kind of like ride in the vibes and not fully understanding what the hell is going on but it feels pretty um i think you'd really enjoy it too i just wanted like a few more answers you know yeah incredible vibes incredible writing i felt like very dark academia in, like incredibly dark academia um there it is the betrayals i read that in like a day and a half ate it up so Last but not least, the book that I read 45 minutes ago, just finished it, just bought the second one because I can't wait seven weeks to get the sequel uh, from the library, is Malice. Everybody told me to read this. Um, this is a slightly retelling of Sleeping Beauty, which I knew it, and then as I started reading it, I was like, oh, they're just using the names. <laughs> I get it. Um, but no, it actually, as you keep reading it, it does actually tie into Sleeping Beauty. It just took them a while to get there. How do I describe this? Basically, there is a world where there are fae and there are humans. There are a bunch of other things as well, but mainly fae and human. And there are these two kingdoms, the fae kingdom called like Etheria, I think. And then the human kingdom called Briar. And Briar was basically built it's like this teeny tiny little kingdom it's it's like just one city it's like singapore <laughs> so we have singapore guarding etheria they are like a human shield keeping the other humans away from constantly trying to get into the fey realms i don't know anyway the fey gave briar a gift for being their kind of little bodyguard um and that gift is the graces and so there are all of these babies that get blessed i guess by the fey and they have various powers so there's like healing graces wisdom graces and you can like go to one of these graces and be like hey my hair is a mess can you give me an elixir that makes my hair really nice and they'll give you an elixir and your hair will be nice for a month and then you go back and get it again so we meet our main character alice who is a grace but she is a dark grace she's the only one because she does have powers but her powers come not from fey blood but from villa blood and villa um are like fey that turned evil or something i don't know it gets explained later in the book but basically she is half human half villa and she is considered like really evil all of her powers can only be used for bad things so people come to her to be like i hate this girl and i want her to get warts 
so make me an elixir to give her warts i don't know um she basically like only does dark magic so even though people like come to her and she actually makes like the most money out of her entire house um people low-key hate her and fear her so she's called like a monster and a mongrel and all this stuff our story kind of follows her but we also meet the princess and all of the briar royal women have this curse where if they haven't met their true love by the age of 21 they just drop dead <laughs> and so their stories somehow get intertwined there is romance there is an interesting magic system i thought that i was getting like a teensy bit bored maybe 75 percent of the way through and then the ending is the reason why I went and bought the second book. It definitely picked up. There's a lot of action. I'm excited for what I feel like the second book will be a lot of action. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought that the construction of the world was really interesting. I don't super love the princess. I think that the princess is a very just like classic character of like, she's beautiful and she's royal, but she wants to change things and like she's progressive and she cares about people like i don't know it, it felt aurora isn't new let's just say that um but i did really think that alice was an interesting character and i really enjoy her so yes i will con i will continue reading it i plan on starting the second one right after this video so um yeah that is that's all right i'm so surprised at how much i read but i'm very happy with what i read um and yeah um let me know what you guys are reading i have another long flight ahead of me so if you want to i think i still have time for you guys to tell me give me your recommendations for a good flight book please um that also might be what we're talking about in our next video <laughs> um so yeah i will talk to you guys next time thank you again to squarespace for sponsoring this definitely check them out if you're interested in starting um again whether it's a shop whether it's a blog community everything um you can go to squarespace.com slash carrie can read after you start your free trial to get 10 percent off of your website or domain i will catch you guys later i will be back in korea probably for the next video maybe who knows um and yeah i will see you then it is a as you can tell by the ridiculous lighting in this video i'm so sorry it is a like puffy cloudy day um the sky just keeps changing we got a cute little view cute um so anyway i will why didn't i just film it right here the lighting is so nice oh well um so yeah i will see you guys next time thank you to squarespace and information is down below always see you later let me know i'm having like a youtuber block um so i'm running out of book video ideas if you have anything you'd like me to talk about let me know and i will try and make a video about it okay so yeah okay see you guys bye